Luke chapter 15, verse 4 through 6. It says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Will you help me in prayer right now? Just close your eyes, bow your heads, and let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love and your mercies. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your opportunity that you've given us to be in your house and for your love and your compassion towards us. And even in this service today, we have felt already your presence and your power. And we're so grateful. And I pray, Lord, that there would be a freedom and an anointing in the preached word of God and upon the hearer who hears. I pray that we would respond. Oh, God, I pray as you prompt us. We give you freedom and liberty to speak and to move. In Jesus' name, have your way in this house. Have your way in our lives. We surrender it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. With me right now, it seems to be sunglasses. I cannot keep a pair of of sunglasses. I found I finally found a pair that were half decent that I didn't know I even had. They were tucked away in a place I just didn't think to ever look and somebody had given them to me and so I was excited. I finally had another pair of sunglasses. And it didn't take but a week and I have since lost that pair of sunglasses. I have no idea where they are. I've looked everywhere I know to look. I, I seem to just leave them laying around, you know, so I buy nothing but the cheapest varieties because I'm notorious for losing a pair of sunglasses. But then again, maybe that's why I don't pay closer attention to them and lose them because I haven't put as much value on the pair that I buy. But all I know is that I've owned some pairs for as little as a week, maybe two at the most, and then as soon as I walk out into the sun, I am reminded. And I am angry at myself that I, once again, have lost my sunglasses. Then the process starts all over again, and, and really, I despise, I don't know about you, but I despise searching for things. Keys, phone when it's lost, some of us absolutely go ballistic when we cannot find our phone for like five minutes. We don't know what to do. Socks, oh my goodness. Socks, how do you end up with one sock and you cannot find the other sock? Trying to find the matching pair, losing them all the time. It's probably because my dog ate it. I'm, and that's a true story. She loves socks. But what if, I was, what if I was searching for something that got lost on its own? We have had several dogs over the years, as Bishop has pointed out recently in one of his <laughs> messages. One now lives with him. I donated that. I felt he needed that in his life, and <clears throat> it really was a gift to him. He just hasn't received it yet. <clears throat> But we've had several dogs over the years, and there was a time or two, actually many, that they got out, and we had to go searching for them because they, they, they could not find their way back home. I, I remember when we lived in Centerton, we were in a subdivision, and um, we pulled back into the subdivision, and there were our dogs in the driveway. I don't know how long... They had been out, I, I'm not sure, but 
our neighbor, uh, he, he told me later, he said, I, um, I started to walk across the street to put them back in the fence. But when they came to the edge of the sidewalk and began to bark and growl, I said, they're just fine where they're at, and I'm, I'm going to let them be. And, and we had many instances where they were lost. We also at that time had a, a small Yorkie whose name was Pierre. It was quite humorous because we had like a South African borable, which is bred to protect villages against lions in South Africa. And then we had a Yorkie, and that was a great combination. But our Yorkie we had for a long time. And I'll never forget the day that, that Pierre, what a great name, Pierre got out. And I don't know how in the world the dog went as far as he did, but we just happened to think of let's post online that we've lost our dog and Somebody happened to pick him up, and they called and said, we've got your dog. And when I went to get that dog, it was like miles down the road. I don't know how that little dog made it. I don't know, but by the grace of God. <laughs> but he was a long way off. And I remember how I felt when I found that lost dog. I, I, I had a mixture of emotions, really. Um, there, was, there was gladness that he was found, but there was anger that he had run off. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody else? We, we, we've had to search for them and because they couldn't find their way back home. I hate searching and not being able to find. It feels like such a waste of time because it really is such a waste of time. I don't know, but maybe it is my own um, predisposition against searching that makes me so grateful. But I am extremely grateful for what God has done for me. He did not require me to find my own way to safety. But he searched for me. He did not sit idly by while I wandered helplessly in the night, but he searched for me. He did not just leave the light on for me, but he took the light out into the night and he actively sought me out. For when I was lost, he came looking for me. When I didn't know where to turn, he came looking for me. When I couldn't find my own way, he sought me. When I didn't have any moral bearings, he came after me. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Let's look at this story in Luke's gospel, chapter 15. It contains three analogies of someone seeking something, three parables. One is... A coin which is dropped in a house and it's misplaced. One is a son who willfully walks away from his father's house. But the one which prompts perhaps the most pity from the reader is that of a sheep who carelessly wanders away from the flock. Jesus poses the scenario of a man with 100 sheep. You don't accumulate 100 sheep casually or without effort. We're talking about a diligent shepherd to have a hundred sheep. He did not allow predators to come in to have that many sheep. He monitored them for sickness. He guarded against thieves. He was a good shepherd, else 100 sheep would never have been entrusted in his care. We are not sure how it happened. Perhaps a hole in the fence Perhaps they were coming back from grazing and a storm scared the flock and that one, he ran off. Perhaps the night wind carried the smell of a lion or a bear and it frightened that sheep. All we know is that the shepherd was counting. He was interested. You don't find him simply saying, well, I've got enough. That looks like about 100 to me. But instead, I picture him, that shepherd, finishing his count, and immediately he starts again. 
Maybe I missed one. Maybe I'm just tired and, and miscounted. And so once again, he starts. One, two, three, four, 97, 98, 99. It can't be. Where, where is he? Jesus said in John 10, 14 that a good shepherd knows his sheep. He begins to call it by name. He knows which one is missing. He looks around the pasture. He looks around the farm. He hopes it's still close by, but then he realizes the truth and reality sets in. The sheep is nowhere to be found. He is missing one, and now the choice. Do I leave it or do I seek it? Do I abandon it or do I search for it? I could simply keep the flock here and say, well, he knows where we are. I mean, after all, I didn't drive him away. It's his fault. A little more careful attention to detail on his part, and this wouldn't have happened. Instead, Jesus says, any shepherd worth his weight in salt will secure the 99 he has left. He'll make sure they're safe, but then he'll go out searching for that one. So off he goes, climbing through rugged valleys, over dangerous peaks, looking in places he'd never have gone on his own. He will go to the rugged places he will go to the rough places, suffering scrapes and bruises and hurts, wet and cold, hungry and weary. It doesn't matter. Pain, a price, but unwilling to stop until that moment when he gets close enough to hear that pitiful, weak bleat. He drops down and he looks under one bush and he looks behind the cleft in the rock and he looks here and he looks there and finally he finds that sheep as he bends down and he looks and finds it hiding under a bushel. He sees it hiding there and can I tell you today that that is what Jesus has done for you and for me. You see, it wasn't his fault that I was shivering on some rocky ledge lost. I made my own choices. He didn't drive me away. I did it, but I didn't know how to undo it. I couldn't find my way back. I had gone too far and drifted too far away and done too much to feel like I could come back. To God, I wanted to, but it's just a, it's a little foolish to look at someone without Christ and to say, well, they must want to be an addict. They must want to be miserable. They must want to be lonely and broken and hopeless and helpless. They must want to be scared and fearful and sad. No, they have simply gotten themselves into a fix that they don't know how to get out of. I needed someone to find me. How about you? I don't know about you, but I needed, I needed somebody to come looking for me. I needed to, someone to seek me out. I needed a searcher. I needed a seeker. I needed a shepherd. I needed Jesus to die on Calvary because I was so lost that I couldn't follow somebody get what I'm preaching right now. I needed a good shepherd to say you can't pay that price on your own. So I'm going to robe myself in flesh. I'm going to dwell amongst you and then I'm going to shed my blood on a cross. But I'm not going to stay on that cross because you need me. You need me to do a work in your life so that you can find hope, so that you can find healing, so that you can have authority and power over sickness, over disease, over every devil in hell. And so he rose from that grave on the third day. 
And then in the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, when they were all in one accord, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a Russian and it filled all the house. You know what that was? It was our great God, our great shepherd, seeking, searching for us. You say, well, that was just back then. No, it's not. This room is filled with people who were once bound. It is filled with people who were drug addicts. It is filled with people. Come on, somebody. Where are you at, church? It is filled with people who were once blind, but now they see. They were bound, but now they're free. It is filled with people who were alcoholics, who who were lost, who were destitute, who were broken, who were beat down, but because of Calvary, but because of a good shepherd, but because he was searching and seeking, we were found. Clap your hands if you're thankful. Come on, give him praise if you're thankful. You hear that? That's the song of the redeemed. That's the sound of people who were once lost, but the shepherd came looking. (laughs) You say, my goodness, preacher, you are going crazy. You know what? I can't help it. Because when I look out today, I see people (laughs) like me. I see people who were lost but have been found. (laughs) Because there was a shepherd that said, oh, yeah, there's a church. It's got 99. But there's still one out there that I got to find. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, there's still one out there that's broken. There's still one out there that's gotten lost in the storm and the trials of life, and they just don't know how to make it on their own. And they're lost. They're out there in that wilderness by themselves, and they don't know how to make their way back home. I think I'll go looking for them. There's one that's hurting today. There's one that is searching today. Oh, I need to go find them. Mm. Oh, yeah. I needed somebody to find me. And he was willing. Just like the man in Luke 15, he laid aside the riches of heaven and came to places he had never have been otherwise. His mission was clear, and he made it clear to everybody. For the Son of Man is come, Luke 19.10. To seek and to save that which was lost. (laughs) And so he went, climbing through broken families, over dangerous addictions, searching under the grief and the abandonment, looking in places he would never have gone on his own, suffering not just scrapes and bruises and hurts, but whips and nails and a cross, wet and cold, hungry and weary, paying a price so staggering that it's hard to fathom but unwilling to stop until that moment when he gets close enough to hear that pitiful weak prayer. Jesus, I'm lost. Forgive me. Help me. Oh, God, I need you. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been the one in that place? Praying. It wasn't a strong prayer, but it was enough for him to recognize it. To hear. What is that I hear? The shepherd. He knows the sound. He recognizes the bleat. 
He recognizes that cry. Oh, there it is. Where is it? It's closer. It's close now. It's close now. I hear them praying. I, I hear them crying out. I, I, hear, them, I hear them calling out. I, they, 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 they can't find their way back home. Oh, but I hear it. And so he seeks. He looks. He continues. Mm. Paying a price so staggering. Paying a great price. And he drops down to look at one particular cry. And there I was. And there you were. He found me. He found you. I still remember the feeling looking up into the eyes that had been looking for me. I remember what that was like. I don't know about you, but I remember what that was like. I remember the love that I felt when I fell and when I messed up and when I fell out of the fold. I remember when I asked him to forgive me and I felt the loving arms of a shepherd and I saw and felt his grace work and move once again in my life. I don't know if you're as thankful as I am am today but I am grateful I am forever thankful and grateful that there was a shepherd that has never stopped looking for me when he first found me and brought me out of sin oh what a beautiful day that was but he doesn't ever stop if I drift if I fall away if I get out of the fold he still seeks after me Whoo. I remember the love I felt. Why is his search so diligent? A man searches in direct proportion to the value that he places on the lost object. That, that pair of sunglasses, I've given up. If they show up, they show up. But I'm not that worried about them. Because I didn't even pay for them, and they're not even expensive. I think somebody gave them to me at a wedding for a gift, and they didn't pay probably more than five dollars. They probably ordered them in bulk for all the groomsmen. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of value there, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time looking. But he will look and look. And look and look and seek and search. Just try to imagine the passion with which parents seek a lost child. You talk about a desperate mother and father. Nothing is too much to ask. Don't tell them their child isn't worth it. Don't talk about messy rooms or times the child disobeyed. Not when their child's lost. Because that's their child. And they will seek and they will seek and they will seek until they find them. It's harder to comprehend love like that from our God to one of us. But I can only tell you that I am a first-hand witness and there are many in this house that he sought after until he found. Oh yeah, he pursued me when I didn't have time for him. Uh, he searched for me when I doubted if I was worth finding. Titus 3, 3 through 5 says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Not by works of righteousness, <laughs> which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. He appeared by mercy. I didn't deserve it, but he came anyway and he found me. Huh. Anybody thankful for that? Anybody thankful? For, I, think we, I think we right now need to stand in this house just for a moment right now will you stand and I wonder if you would just begin to thank him for a moment that he searches for you 
And when he finds that lost sheep, oh, the relief. Yes, we receive such a relief, such an overwhelming relief. But you know what our text said? The shepherd is even more overjoyed. (laughs) You know, when I finally did catch my dogs, they learned a lot of English that day. And I, I didn't cuss, okay? Kept my Holy Ghost, but I was close. I was upset. There were times where they were just two feet in the air, getting them home. There were times where I was scolding them. I was giving it to them. You better not ever do that again. Like they understood that. Their trip back wasn't too pleasant. But the good shepherd, he doesn't do that. He didn't drag us home by the scruff of the neck. He didn't dangle it from one arm. He didn't preach at it. You'd better never do that again. Or I'll leave you there. No. The text says he placed it on his shoulders. Safe. Above the hurts. And he carried it home rejoicing. Rejoicing. So this morning, I felt so compelled to preach this word to somebody and tell you that he's searching for you. You've hidden yourself under a bunch of excuses. Oh, God. You've tried to stay out of sight. I just slip in occasionally and try not to be noticed. I can get lost in the crowd. I'm sorry to tell you, he sees you and he seeks you because you are too valuable to him. You are too precious to him. And so he's seeking you today. He won't stop until you let him pick you up and carry you and rejoice over you. You're why he came. For the one rather than the 99 is the one he seeks. The 99 are good, they're secure, they're safe. But I'm going after the one who's lost their way. I'm going after the one who can't find their way back home. John 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. Matthew 13, 45 through 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And so he seeks the one. He looks for the one. Ezekiel 34, 11, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. Is anybody thankful today?